and you think it's for relationship advice, and, and I tell you, hey, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Not only is it above my pay grade, but the truth is a lot of people are not in relationships. They're in manipulations. They're not in relationships. And, and one way you know that you're not in a relationship, you're in a manipulationship, is because it ain't even love that's keeping you there. It, it's not even your value on commitment. You're attached to this person. You can feel it deteriorating you every single day. You can feel yourself becoming less and less of who you once were. Much less the person that you know that you can be. You know this is it's, it's a conflicting space that you're in right now where your happiness and your peace, it's fleeting at best, if not a distant memory, but you're still staying in the very situation you know has something to do with it. Now, of course, there's a trauma bond present but also, what's going on is you're not in a relationship. You're not there because the two of you are relating to each other. You're there because somebody's been manipulating you. And now, you don't even have the confidence in your ability to bounce back if you leave, to start all over, to be okay. You don't have the, you don't have the confidence that, you know what? Suffering this heartbreak of getting the familiar out of my face so I can create a new normal. I, I, can, with, I can withstand that. You don't even have the confidence. It's because it's not a relationship anymore. If it ever was, you're in a manipulationship and it's five signs that you're in a manipulationship. I'm gonna tell you, it's five signs you're in a manipulationship. And, and, and I wanna speak on this because after my last webinar, a young lady asked me like, oh, Dad, how, how do I handle this, 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 and this? And I'm like, handle? There is no handle, there's leaving. I don't even have the, the capacity to teach you and tell you strategies or whatever. You know, I'm competent, but I don't know everything. But I dang sure know that ain't no relationship no more. The first sign is whenever you got a guy who gets passive aggressive with you, but whenever you give in to something that he's asked you, at some point, it stops. That means he's not passive aggressive just because he's a passive aggressive person or just because he feels voiceless otherwise or because whatever. All that immaturity and stuff, that goes out the window. No, he's manipulating you. And you're now in a manipulation ship when that becomes a part of the dynamic and it keeps going on. The same song and dance, the same pattern, keep repeating. You know, y'all was supposed to, y'all normally do this thing every single night or every single week where y'all spend time. Y'all, you know, he cooks for you. Or I don't know, he probably ain't doing all of that. But y'all have a date night or y'all watch a movie or y'all check in with each other throughout the day. But then on this day, no. And, and he plays dumb whenever you ask him about it. But whenever you say, all right, uh, you can you can have some whatever it is that he wanted, whatever it is he's been asking you for or whatever it is that you know that he likes and you do it. Then all of a sudden he comes back to that's manipulation. That is a manipulative person. And if that's the dynamic for you to continue getting any of your needs met, you're now in the manipulation ship. Another sign that you're in a manipulation ship, not a relationship, is when his criticism throttles your self-esteem and keeps you at a point where you feel like nothing is ever really good enough. If his criticism throttles your self-esteem, throttles how, how, how good you feel about the good things that you do, and I'm gonna tell you how you know, you don't even wanna bring good things to him that you're doing because you can expect the criticism. You can expect him to pick it apart, find something wrong, ask you questions. Criticism also comes in the form of questions. Y'all, y'all ever brought something you were excited about and the person said, but what about, but are you sure? Because of, what about this? Not in a way where they're trying to get you to, um, you know, consider other things that can help you get to that end goal even better, but they want you to question if it's really that awesome. Criticism comes in that way as well. I'm not saying that's passive aggressive, but I'm not saying nothing's wrong. I was just asking like, don't you, don't you think that that, that ain't really every little thing? Or something, you always, you always, do you have to do this? You always doing this. That's, that is manipulation. It's not just a complaint. It's not something he's wanting to bring to the forefront so you guys can work on that, fix that together. This is something that he wants to use as a tool to reduce you because the more that he reduces you, the more dependent you become on him for his validation, for his approval, if you're willing to go for it. And now you guys are not in a relationship. You're in a manipulation ship. And third, let me just add this on. It's kind of like 2B, but let's make it a third one. Third way that you know you're in a manipulation ship, not a relationship, is if it always feels like you have to chase him for closeness, for any needs being met, for him to be a man. You always feel like you have to do more. 
You always feel like you have to carry the relationship. You always feel like you have to call more, text more, uh, open up the conversation more. Offer sexual things more, physical touch more, cook more. You always have to do so much more. And I'm not saying this in the sense of it feels like you have to earn him because y'all want to earn each other every single day. But you feel like if you don't go the extra, extra mile and he ain't even, you know, taking one step towards you, that y'all won't talk. Y'all won't connect. You always feel like you're chasing after him. He's pulling away. You're chasing when in the beginning, he the one that wanted your number. He the one that wanted to date with you. He the one that said, can you be my woman? Now that y'all in a relationship, he always got an excuse. Oh, I'm tired. I'm, you know, I'm just really like, like going on right now. You know, I'm trying to take care of my mental health and I'm trying to, the job just a lot of stress. You know what I'm saying? A whole lot going on. And, it's, and now, whatever the reason, the end result is you have to come to him either begging in a sense, giving these long lectures and TED Talks to get your needs met, or you have to act in a way that's burning you out, leaving your cup empty, overfilling his just to get a little bit of breadcrumbs in return. That's not a relationship. Relationship includes reciprocity. A, re a relationship is two people meeting each other. Not always in the middle, of course. You're going sometimes you're gonna have more to give, sometimes on, sometimes him. But it's gonna fluctuate. It ain't always gonna be on you. Another way that you know you're in a manipulation, not a relationship, is whenever he uses fear evoking statements, but in a joking way. Ah, you know I'm just playing. But if you go with somebody else, you know what I'm saying? I I might I might I might I might turn up. I might mess things up. I might. When anybody make those little passive threats, yeah, they just joking, right? They ain't joking. They're just not applying it to right here, right now because you haven't done anything. But the fact that's even on his mind and the fact that he wants it to be on your mind, it's like he's planting little seeds of doubt and fear. And again, that is manipulation. Instead of him knowing that he can rely on the value that he's been contributing to the relationship and that he can trust that you as a woman, not only with good sense, but you just who you are. You just you, you are who you say you are, which is a woman that appreciates the value that he contributes, that he can rely on that to be the reason why you want to honor and protect the relationship. He got to make you be in fear. Might even be abusive, more than just manipulative, but definitely manipulative. Because now whatever the basis, whatever the glue of the relationship that's essentially the foundation. That That's inclusive of the, the substance of the relationship. And so if everywhere you look, the reason why y'all are together, the reason why you ain't left, the reason why you don't want to say certain things about how you truly feel, the reason why this, that, and the other has happened because some form of manipulation has been there already and you've come into agreement with it, you believe it to be like something that's going to happen, that's a manipulation ship. And one more way that you know you are in a manipulation ship is if that man creates a dependency on him. Now, actually, I will say this because it's not giving away too much. The young lady that inspired this conversation altogether, she's in a situation where the guy played this whole, oh, I want to pay all your bills. I want to take care of you. But he only meant take care of her without giving her any money to have on her own without giving her access to the money the same way that he had it. And we can all say, well, she should have asked for that. However, if you just trust in somebody to take care of you, you're not thinking now you're going to have to start asking for every meal that you eat, for every article of clothing that you wear. So that's a form of manipulation. It's a way to create a dependence. It's a way to say, I'm going to make sure that as I, as I claim I'm taking care of you or moving us to a new state that's so much better with a so much bigger house, or I'm claiming that I'm doing this, that, and the other for you, really what I'm doing is putting you in a position where you're not okay without me. And you know this is happening whenever the guy honestly refuses to do anything that creates autonomy for you two. If that man is talking about taking care of everything, everything needs to include a regular investment, a set amount that's already waiting for you in the account. If man says, I'm going to take care of you, I'm going to take care of all the bills. No, not just the bills, but your endeavors, what you like to do just for you, not him, your travel, your hanging out. And you need regular access to that without having to always come to him. Now, does that mean he should just be splurging and, you know, have no control? No, no. but don't let anybody use anything to create a dependence on you while noticing, hold on, there's a, there's a fine line. There's some fine print, some small print here where I don't have any control or any ability to do what I'm supposed to do for me anymore. 
at least create interdependence and let that be in a, in, a, in a real serious, if not a marriage situation where that person is really proven over time. Don't jump straight into quote unquote soft life at the expense of your autonomy because now again, that is grounds for manipulation. I know you're thinking that you're dealing with a guy who's so certain and he's so sure and he's so ready. No, you're dealing with a guy that wants to hurry up and get control over you. That's just facts. And what you'll see this, really this happens a lot with older gentlemen. This don't, because I mean, a 21 year old typically ain't got no money like that unless he's scamming or something. So you'll typically see this kind of thing with older gentlemen. Be very careful. Those of y'all who like to date men who are 40 and up, maybe 45 and up, you'll hear a lot of talk from them that tries to leverage your appeal for certainty as a way to draw you in to their manipulation ship. That way they can bypass all of your normal guards, all of the amount of time it's supposed to take to effectively build a foundation with the two. They'll bypass that by, hey, you know, I'm just, I just know what I want. I just came in ready. I ain't like these little boys. Be very careful. There's always supposed to be a process to vetting a man. Now, does it have to take three years for him to know that he wants to? No, I'm not saying that. But just use your own intuition, your own discernment. Matter of fact, there's actually a few strategies that you can use to accurately assess what I call a man's character credit score. There's a few tools. I'm not gonna go in depth with it here because I went in depth with it. One of my programs, but I did give more information at that link that's down in the comments. Also in the caption, you back out. The best advice for those who are 40 and up. Best dating advice for women 40 and up or something like that. If you see that link, get access to that. It's absolutely free and it goes more in depth about how you can weed out those men who are trying to leverage the fact that they're at a certain point in their life, they're just so much older or whatever. Because the, the game is different for men who are a little bit older as opposed to those who are a little bit younger. They can't even play those same games those other men play, play. So if you date men who are a little bit older, get access to that video ASAP. But back to what I was saying, look at the foundation of your relationship. Are you two really relating to each other, connecting with each other, building each other up, loving each other, learning each other? Are you guys forgiving each other? Are you guys doing that as, as part of the relationship? Or are there a lot of tricks and fears involved as to why the relationship is still going on there, there's a lot of feeling of well i can't just let go of all that i've invested and in. i can't do this and i don't want to do that it, it, is it is that the glue of the relationship because if so it's not a relationship it's a manipulation ship and the moment that you leave that is the moment that you rid yourself of all the toxicity you come into agreement with by way of allowing that manipulation to continue as long as it has it's time. It's time. But those are just my thoughts. I'm your internet brother trying to look out per usual. And if you got something of value from this, if this conversation blessed you, bless somebody else by hitting that share button down there in the corner. I don't ask for money whenever I do this. I, I just ask for you to be a, a vessel for somebody else to get value the same way that you did. That's it. And if you're over the age of 40 or you date men who are over the age of 40, click that link that you see pinned down there in the... Comments right here by my page, seducegoodman.com slash whatever. Also in the caption whenever you back out to get access to my best dating advice for women who are 40 plus. All right.